Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card featuring the Winter Alpaca stamp set and greetings, as well as the snowy backdrop and then some trees from another Lawn Fawn stamp set, the Snow Day stamp set. I'm going to start by die cutting the snowy backdrop here or background from some smooth white cardstock. I'm going to do a white on white background here to give the illusion of snow. I love the texture from this. There's so many little bits and pieces, so even though it die cut all the way through, sometimes they kind of stick in there a little bit inside the die. Um, first, I'm cleaning off the cutting plates here for my big shot so that they don't cause any indentations when I die cut anything else. And then I'll pierce or poke the rest of those out here in a little bit. I'm also die cutting a rectangle from Smooth White Cardstock using the largest A2 sized stitched rectangle die. This is going to be the same size as the snowy backdrop. And then I'm going to take two of these stitched hillside borders and die cut two borders from this one rectangle. So I'm going to have one kind of tall border. I'll take another one of the stitched hillside borders, line that up, and die cut another border from that. That gives me two snowy borders to place over my snowy background, and that gives me a place to tuck the trees and the alpacas. Next, I am going to stamp the winter alpaca from the stamp set of the same name. I'm going to stamp that several times. I actually only needed three, but one of those didn't stamp as well as the others. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this tree from the Snowy Day stamp set using the Lawn Fawn Noble Fur Ink. I'm going to use both first and second generation stamping and again I'm going to stamp more trees than what I actually need to complete the card. That way um, if some of the impressions aren't as good as some of the others I can kind of use the better stamped images. I'm going to go ahead and die cut those trees and set those aside and then I'm going to work on coloring in my alpacas. Um, to color these in, I actually did a Google search for alpacas so that I could kind of get some different color combination ideas. My first one's going to be more in the brown kind of tan category. I laid down a base color of E55 and then to give the illusion of that soft alpaca fur, I am using that dotting technique to fill in the rest of the image with little dots of color and I'm use, doing that with E57 and E59. And then I'm going to go back over that with my darkest, the E59, and add a little texture, go around all those little, the uh, outside uh, sloped edges or rounded edges, and then I can go back in and add some darker dots if I need to as well. The face is E51, and then I'll use a little E55 around the face for shading, maybe even a little E57, and then blend it out and add a little R20 for the cheek. The scarf is R39, 46, and 24, and I'm going to do all the scarfs in the same color combination. Just cr uh, create different colors of alpacas. I'll go ahead and move on to my next alpaca and I'm going to do it more in the whitish gray color uh, color scheme and I'm going to use warm gray markers in lots of tones. I was trying I, I started very very light with warm gray 00, zero and worked my way up. The dots here were with warm gray 2. I'm also going to use warm gray 3 and 4. Originally I went with the warm gray 00 on the face, but I really didn't like how washed out it made the face look. I almost liked the little bit more um, lighter face from the brown alpaca, so I went over it with E51 when I got a little further along and added R20 for the cheeks as well. So here's that E51. You can see it pulling in a little more color going around with my warm gray 4 to add some detail and shadowing and shading. And then again, going in with my scarf colors, which are R24, 46, and 39. 
The face is still pretty light at this point. I didn't go over it a whole lot and I end up going over it a little bit more after I colored in the scarf. I really felt like it needed more. And I'll just really color that in with E51. For my last alpaca, he's going to be more of a very, very light tan. And I started with a base of E30, and then I'm adding dots with E31 and E55. Same thing as before, just different color combinations, and those dots really help give the illusion of texture or fur. The face is E51 again, a little R20 for the cheeks. I went over the other cheeks to help bring a little more color in. A little E55 for shadowing. And again, my same three colors for the red scarf. Once I have all of my alpacas colored in, I can go ahead and die cut them with the coordinating lawn fawn winter alpaca dye. And it'll create these cute little die cut alpacas. You can see I've started to put together my scene here, tucked those die cut trees on and about the uh, stitched hillside borders there and then I'll build up the scene with these alpacas. I like using multiples of a, a, uh, one design or a similar design to create a bigger impact for a card like I'm doing here. Once all three of these are die cut I am ready to add a greeting and then I can start putting the whole card together. I'm just going to kind of shift and move these around a little bit to get the layout exactly the way I want it to look. And then I'm going to lay out the greetings from the Winter Alpaca stamp set right next to each other so that I can take my acrylic block and pick all three of these little sections of the greeting up together and create a landscape a landscape style greeting. I'm going to ink that up with the Lawn Fawn Black Licorice ink. Stamp that right below my scene. And then the little phrase underneath that says Alpaca My Scarf, I'm going to ink up with the Lawn Fawn Lobster ink and stamp that right below. I'm going to add some detail to the eyes on the alpaca with a black glaze pen and then add a little fun detail to the cheeks of each alpaca with a white gel pen. Make sure that those are really good and dry before you start adhering them or touching that portion of the critters. I'll set those aside and start to put together my card. I'm not going to layer anything back behind the snowy backdrop simply because my card base is white and I wanted it to be white on white, but you could definitely add a contrasting color and those little die cut areas are going to show up even more. I placed adhesive on the back of one of the snowy borders or stitched hillside borders and placed that along the bottom of the snowy backdrop panel. And I'll adhere the second one along the bottom of that, the one with the stamped greeting. And then I'll take glue dots and attach the trees with those, these are nice, strong, sticky adhesive. They work w really well for small die cut pieces like these here that I'm using today. Go ahead and make sure and overlap some of the trees and give it a little bit more of a realistic type of look. I'm loving this new Noble Fur ink color from Lawn Fawn. It's the perfect Christmassy or holiday green color add this last tree. Some of the trees are behind the stitched hillside border, some are on top. And then I can take the alpacas, make sure I get those positioned just where I want those to go, move them around a little bit, and then I'll start adding adhesive to those. Again, using these glue dots, And then I'll place those along the stitched hillside border. Two of them are going to be kind of tucked um, right along that border, not really behind it so much as just along that nice sloping border. And the last one I'm going to place on top of it. And then I can attach the whole panel to a white card base. This is a top fold card base from Simon Says Stamp. Nice, thick, 
sturdy card base. Finally, I'll finish with a little Wink of Stella clear glitter pin on each of the scarfs. And then I will also trace the fun little lines on the trees with the glitter pin for a touch of sparkle there as well. Thanks for watching this holiday card video featuring the Lawn Fawn Winter Alpaca Stamp Set. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.